Welcome everyone, in this video we will talk about the Boltzmann distribution. Now, this distribution is basically uh, about how pressure changes, so let's say how pressure changes as height changes, so as age changes. And what pressure are we talking about? We're talking about the atmospheric pressure. As you might have heard, the pressure is not constant in the Earth's atmosphere. When you go up, it generally tends to decrease, okay? So we want to basically, uh, to make this more mathematical, we want to express P, the pressure, the atmospheric pressure, as a function of H, the height. So how do we start? Well, this, this Boltzmann distribution is a model. And as we do in every model, we need to make some assumptions. One assumption that we make is that the pressure is constant. So we assume that as the height changes, the, pre uh, the temperature does not change. And this, of course, is not the case in reality. The atmosphere, the atmosphere when you go up in the atmosphere, the temperature will actually decrease, okay? Don't think, oh, we're getting closer to the sun, it should increase. No, it, that doesn't happen. The, the amount that you get closer is very, very small. And so that doesn't increase the temperature, but you might say, why does it decrease then? Well, I'm not that sure, but I think it's it has to do with the Serra effect and the fact that the, Earth's, the Earth itself will be reflecting some of the light that comes to it and you're going to be uh, far, farther away, further away from the reflecting surface, so the temperature decreases. Okay, that's what I think is the case, but I might be wrong. Please be sure to check it out yourself, and if you find a better explanation, please write it in the comment section below. But enough said. For our purposes, we assume that the temperature is constant. Now we make this assumption because this will make the this will make the modeling very very easy. Let's say easier, okay? Because easy and hard, they are relative. But I think this assumption makes the problem a lot easier. But of course, it makes it also a lot, uh, not that uh, accurate as well, but that's not what we care about for now. Uh, so let's draw a diagram then. We will have the ground here. This is the Earth's surface. And let's say that at the surface, there is an atmospheric pressure of P0. Maybe this is equal to 1 atm, 1 atmospheric pressure, we don't know. But we call it P0. And let's be interested in the pressure at a height of H. We will be selecting a volume of air, okay? And it will be like this, like a layer. It will have a height of delta H, okay? And it will have a cross-sectional surface area. So, uh, not cross-sectional, ex actually, excuse me. So, it will have a, like, this is like a layer, right? So, this will be S. This surface will be S. But I don't want to draw it to make it confusing, to not make it confusing. So, I will just write S for the surface area that I just drew. And we know that the gravity is downwards. And also, another... Assumption is that this is constant as well. And of course, this is not the case again, because as you get further away from the Earth, the gravitational pull decreases. But I think, and I might be wrong, but from what I can tell, this is actually a bigger simplification because, I mean, we won't be moving that much further away from the Earth. So the G value, it will be close to 9.8 that we are used to work with but temperature really varies a lot, okay? And, okay, so what else can we say? We also know that there will be a pressure pressing up, let's say, and there will be also another pressure, P plus delta P, okay? So this P plus delta P is the pressure that is exerted on the top layer, and this P is the pressure that is ex exerted on the bottom layer, all right? 
And so if we were to um, if we were to write a force equation for this, because remember, this there are particles in this, and we think that we assume that these particles are at rest. At least let's say that their center of mass is at rest because they will be moving randomly, but the random movement cancels out so that the center of mass is not moving in 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 a sense, okay? And so we will say that the net force is zero, F net equals zero, uh, which means that the forces downward should balance the forces that are upward. Now, what do we have? And remember that pressure is force per area, okay? So pressing down, we have this force, I mean this pressure times the area, so it is P plus delta P times S, the surface area, equaling Oops, we also have mg, right? The mass of the uh, section that we chose. So let's call it, well, let's call it delta mg, okay? This delta only belongs to the m here. This should equal the forces that are acting upward. In this case, there is only one force that is going to be P times S. So far, so good. Now, if we were to distribute this parentheses, we would have, let me actually write it here because it's a simple step we will have PS plus delta PS. And so look at that. Look at that. PS will cancel. They will simplify. Leaving us with the result. Negative delta PS equals delta MG. Cool. Now I want to express delta M in terms of other quantities. So we know that the density is mass per volume, right? Let's say that we are interested in the density of the, um, of the, of this part, okay? Of this part. <laughs> I couldn't form the word, sorry. So that's going to be the mass per volume. And so what is the, well, what is the mass? We call it delta M. Let's write it like this. It is delta M over delta V. So delta M is equal to rho times delta V. And delta V is going to be just surface area times the height, delta H. So I will make the substitution. Equaling rho S delta H G. Notice that S cancels. That's nice. And so we have delta P. I mean negative delta, delta P equaling rho times G times delta H. At this point, we want to uh, take the situation to the extreme. We want the delta to become an infinitesimal so that we have differentials. So if we take delta to zero, if we take the delta H to zero, if we are interested in a tiny, tiny section, then we can say delta dp equaling rho g dh, right? I hope this step is clear for you guys. And so after this, we're going to substitute for rho. Now, how do we substitute for rho? The way we do it is like this. We know the ideal gas equation. It is PV equals nRT, right? And so if we continue this, we know that the n, the mole number, is going to be the total mass over the molar mass, right? Because if you have, let's say, if you have 10 grams and the molar mass is 2 grams, you're going to have 5 moles, okay? And if you guys want, let's say that this is delta M, so that we are interested. Well, it doesn't actually matter, though. Okay, okay, we can say M. This is the total, though. Let me write total, at least. M total. Okay, it's total. Um, and so what else can we do? Uh, well, at this point, if we divide by V, by the volume, we will have P equals M total over the volume times RT over M. And of course, mass total over the volume, that's just rho, right? That's the density. So if we solve for density, it's going to be P M over RT, right? And notice why I said we don't need to, in fact write delta here because 
another assumption. I know we are making lots of assumptions, but another assumption assumption that we make is that. Well, actually. Well, you could write it actually. I mean, now that I think about it, you could write it. Maybe I should have write, written it. Because I was going to say, I'm, I'm going to be honest, okay? I was going to say the rho is a constant, but excuse me, it is not a constant. It is not a constant because P is changing and the other things are constant. An assumption that we make is that the molar mass is constant. So the atmosphere is composed of only one type of gas. That's an assumption that we make. But the rho, the density of the gases is not constant. It changes because the pressure changes, okay? I got confused there a bit, sorry. So we're going to have that. I'm going to substitute this here. We're going to have negative dp equaling pm over rtdh. So let's continue it here with this color. It's going to be negative. Well, let's say it, dp by p is going to be equal to uh, going to be equal to negative m r t d h. If I take the integral on both sides, we're going to have from 0 to h. When we're at 0, the pressure is p naught, and at h, we're interested in p. It's going to be ln p minus ln p naught, right? There are absolute values, but the pressure is already positive. I don't put them. We're going to have negative m h over r t, and we can combine these inside one logarithm. So that's going to be ln p over p naught, right? And so, well, maybe we should do it on the on a new page. Let's change the color to the, what we're used to work with. Okay, we have, we have ln p over p naught equaling what was it? It was negative mh over rt. So, also there should be a, yeah, there is a g. <laughs> excuse me, excuse me. Uh, notice we substitute the row here. We forgot about this li little g. There is g, okay. I'm, I'm sorry for that. I just noticed the units. That's how I realized it. So there is g here. And if we take both sides to the power of e like this, we're going to have p over p naught equaling e to the power of negative m g h over r t. And so p as a function of h is equal to p naught times e to the power of negative m g h over r t. And from this, as you can notice, the, um, what do you call it? The pressure is in fact decreasing as h increase increases and in the limit as h goes to infinity um the well let's see what would happen so it is e to the power of negative infinity which is just going to give you zero okay so the pressure is going to go to zero as h goes to infinity anyways i hope this video was helpful if you have any questions please add them in the comment section and if you want to see more videos like this please make sure to follow Please make sure to subscribe, I mean. <laughs> but anyways, uh, I hope to see you in another video. Until then, take care.